in the result, having considered all the evidence and the arguments advanced by counsel for the state and the accused, the, state, the accused is found guilty of corruption in contravening section 4, bracket 1, close bracket, bracket A, close bracket, of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act 12 of 2004. More than a month after Jack Salebi was found guilty of corruption, sentencing has been handed down here at the South Khateng High Court. The former police commissioner has been sentenced to 15 years in jail. Now this high profile case has major implications for South Africa. We track how it all unfolded with the help of the Mail and Guardian. To talk us through the sentencing is senior investigative journalist Adrian Basson. Um, I, I think it's a very strong sentence that was handed down to Jackie Celebe, not a surprising one. Um, he was sentenced uh, to 15 years imprisonment uh, and that is the prescribed minimum sentence for law enforcement agents that's been convicted of corruption. Uh, Judge Joffe in his ruling said that the fact that Jackie Celebe was the head of the South African Police Service uh, even made it worse. Uh, the fact that he showed no remorse um, and that he not at, at any stage indicated um, any shame or, or, or admitted guilt for what he did. Um, that counted against him in the end. So, yes, 15 years imprisonment, um, it's prescribed by law and, and I'm not surprised. Um, Jackie Celebe will definitely appeal his conviction and sentencing. Um, his advocate has already indicated that they will file for leave to appeal. So, yes, this process will go on for another year or two, um, on the quickest another year. Uh, the case will then be argued in front of the Supreme Court of Appeal and depending on that outcome, Jackie Celebe will then have to go to prison. But, you know, maybe by that stage he's, he's fallen ill or, or something like that. I'm here with Stefans Brimmer, a senior investigative journalist at the Mail and Guardian. Now, Stefans, you've been involved with the Celebe investigation for close on four years. Tell us, how did it start? In fact, it's, it's more than four years now. Um, it started before Brett Kebble was killed, um, and that's... Uh, Brett Kibble was killed November 2005. Sometime before that we got these tip-offs about, uh, about the police commissioner being in a bag of this strange man, Glenn Agliotti. And uh, well, we started looking at it and one thing led to another. In May 2006 we did our first story, basically exposing the relationship between Celebi and Agliotti and a range of other strange people. Now the court ruling really vindicates our investigative team's work these past few years and I think things got quite crazy for you the closer you got to the truth. Yeah, well just, just I think the first kind of hassle that we had is that no one believed us initially. Even, even inside the newsroom you had colleagues saying, but you know, if all that you're saying is true, why, why aren't the authorities doing anything about this? You know, and it doesn't really help to keep pointing out to people that the authorities are actually the same guy that you're investigating. He's the guy who's in charge of investigations. Well, fortunately at that time there were the Scorpions and so on and they were investigating. And so one thing led to another and eventually we were vindicated. I think around the time that Glenn Agliotti was, was arrested and that was, uh, it was about a year after, after Kibble was killed and Agliotti was arrested for the Kibble murder. But then, you know, well, it's the guy who the police chief has admitted is his friend Finnish and Kla, who is now arrested. And then people suddenly woke up mm. and said, OK, maybe what these guys have been saying, there's something to it. It's Sam Sol, my colleague. Uh, and I started getting these rumors that we somehow involved in, in drug trading. And um, it seems that those rumors were being planted de deliberately so as to justify an investigation into us. Mm. And uh, I was approached by someone called Fox. And uh, Fox claimed to, to be a source who would, under the cover of anonymity, give me, give me more information on Agliotti, on Celebi, on this whole thing. And in fact, it turned out he was a plant. He was there to, to spy on me. He was affiliated with, well, with something called Palto. Uh, and Palto was a bunch of thugs who, who worked with Agliotti and who worked with Celebi under, with official police badges. They were given reservist status and, uh, you know, really given, given the police badge to, to pursue their, their nonsense was and apparently that was something that that crowd actually did quite a few times you know it was when there's an enemy they plant drugs and they arrest him and I, I certainly hope there are no more people languishing in jails who were set up by them <laughs> Jackie Celebe has definitely by far been the most prominent and the most high-profile politician or, or civil servant um, convicted of corruption in South Africa post-1994. We had Shabir Sheikh, 
uh, he was a businessman. We had Tony and Gany, uh, who was ANC chief whip. But Jackie Celebi was really in the heart of the ANC, the heart of the struggle, a very close confidant of former President Thabo Mbeki. And I think this case opens up the, the, the bad and the dark side of South Africa, the realization that even our top cop um, is open to being corrupted uh, by organized criminals. I think one of the, the maybe sadder consequences of the investigation into Celebi um, was that all of the organized criminals around him wasn't exposed. Um, of course, the Scorpions had to use this method of investigation, so this is a so-called domino method, to get to Celebe. Um, but I doubt whether we will ever know the full extent of the drug cartels um, and the entire organized crime syndicate um, that Celebe got dragged into. The investigators involved with the Celebi investigation has now formed a core of what is now known as Amar Mungani. Tell us a bit about this. Um, what, should we be excited? We should be very excited. We should be ecstatic. Um, Amar Mungani is uh, formally called the MNG Center for Investigative Journalism. It was really an attempt to uh, take the investigative capacity that the MNG has and grow it, grow it beyond what is possible for a commercial operation. So you, you take this investigative, the core of the investigative capacity, we dumped us in a, in a non-profit organization, a Section 21 company, mm -hmm. and we say MNG keeps funding us at the level at least that it was funding us before. But now we get outside donors, uh, foundation money, so as to, 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 to grow the investigative capacity. The Man and Guardian still has publisher gets those stories, but the public interest is served better by having better investigative capacity to break better stories uh, and keep churning out the celebes, you know. As the celebrity trial wraps up, dozens of investigations continue here at the Men and Guardian. We'll carry on bringing you the stories that really matter.